on Lifestyles Plus, the magazine of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, EWM Realty, we have an incredible show featuring musicians, athletes, designers, and so much more. You don't want to miss it, and it starts right now. Lifestyles Plus. I'm Olga Villaverde. Joining me today to discuss what's new and exciting in the world of luxury, from high-end residences to fashion, travel, and luxury trends, is one of the magazine industry's most respected professionals, Lifestyles South Florida Editor-in-Chief, Aneta Novoselsko. Welcome, Aneta. Hi, how are you? I'm so happy to have you. Likewise, thank you. All right, so I heard you went to Colorado, and you went to a stunning location, Take Me There. Indeed, it was an incredible experience. Um, I went on a retreat um, called Reset. Reset. Um, yes, located in Telluride, a place I've never been to before. Um, picturesque, gorgeous, very nature-oriented. Um, and there I have experienced quite profound and life-changing uh, really? moments. Yeah. I know you took this amazing picture behind us. I did. I see the chopper that you yes. were in. Tell me that experience. You yes. were telling me that you could actually see through the floor because it was made out of glass. Glass. Yeah. Part of the experience of Reset is to sort of challenge yourself and one of their pathways is called Rome and part of that is to sort of really go out there and do incredible things. So for this particular uh, segment of my uh, retreat we took the helicopter up um, mm. and were deposited at the top of a mountain where there was like this glamping site set up with beautiful furs inside um, wine, you know, all these things that you can kind of enjoy and um, enjoy the stunning landscape. How awe-inspiring was it to be up there and to see that? Um, it had to be a moment. It was a moment. Um, you feel incredibly excited and nervous and it's sort of like the juncture of incredibly powerful feelings all at once and I was incredibly scared. I had to have a mantra as I was kind of taking off and landing. I would be too. <laughs> it, was, it was really quite scary but at the end of it you feel incredibly accomplished right. and you I have did this, something absolutely and you have like this sense of um, power and uh, I think it's part of the challenge at Reset to really kind of face the things and push yourself forward. So tell me what a typical day is like. So I should probably start by saying that you are staying at a beautiful hotel, um, Auberge, in the middle of the village of Telluride. Um, there are some rooms that are dedicated just for the guests, so it's quite luxurious and very opulent. Um, and then it really depends on which pathway you choose. Um, there is a pathway called Rome, which really encourages a sort of adventurous spirit. Um, you get to do the heli, heli skiing or sort of trekking up the mountains, and depending on the seasons, your adventures get to be really seasonal. Um, so you kind of give yourself over to this pathway. In my case, it was kind of a mix of different things. And it would, let's say, start with skiing or going up to the mountain and kind of having this incredible view and um, mm. kind of challenging yourself. And then after the eight minutes, which felt like hours <laughs> going down on the helicopter, um, you are taken to a spa service. and. Um, you get a massage per day Ooh, nice. um, in your room. Uh, so everything's kind of set up and really waiting for you. Um, and that is followed by breath work or yoga or Pilates, sort of really depending on what your intention is. Um, but everything is done exclusively 
well, it's really quite luxurious. And I want to say that the foundation of the reset program is trekking. So your every day you track more, you walk more, you um, snowshoe more, and you are challenging challenging yourself physically. I know you wrote about it in Lifestyle South Florida yes. magazine, and I. As I was looking, I did come across a quote that I just wanted to read because I thought it was just beautiful. And it says here, our goal is to help our guests break out of patterns and tap into their highest potential. Mm -hmm. Did you get to do that? Um, I did. Um, I did. I mean, I um, sort of walked away with some real convictions, new found challenges and new found ways of doing things. Um, I had an opportunity to uh, meet the owners and the people who run um, Reset and the, the genesis of this was really to kind of challenge CEOs and kind of hard tracking A type personalities to sort of take a minute for yourself and reorient your and reset. Yeah, absolutely reset and, and sort of not run so fast, so hard, so long without taking a minute for yourself. So it's kind of intended for you to really genuinely own that experience. And I, I truly felt empowered and changed. That's fantastic. Yeah. Speaking of empowered and changed, yes. again, the magazine talks about Reset. You also talk about one of my favorite chefs. Mm -hmm. Hello, mm -hmm. uh, Chef Daniel Baloud. Yes. Talk about the new restaurant in New York City. Tell me about it. How fantastic is sure. it? Sure. It's, it's stunning. Uh, visually, it's just gorgeous. It's um, located right in Midtown. And um, the architecture of it is just incredibly Gotham-like. Mm. It's really an homage to New York. Um, Chef Balud is one of my favorite chefs um, beyond the fact that he's an incredible Amazing. culinary wizard. I mean, he's just such a gentleman. I've had the pleasure of knowing him for quite a long time. Tell me about the food. The food you know is, I like to eat. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, the food is French. It's a French cuisine. Mm. Um, it's very vegetable seafood forward. So it's his personal spin on that. It's incredibly sophisticated. But I think in, in terms of the timing of opening the restaurant, it was so pivotal in New York because it kind of happened at the end of um, the pandemic. And it was sort of one of the first big restaurants that reestablished themselves or put themselves on the map. So New Yorkers have been incredibly supportive because it's right. been a symbol of sort of resurrection for, for the city. So. And we can't forget about Cafe Balud. We cannot. Okay. Um, actually, I um, had the pleasure of going and having the truffle menu dinner that he does sort of all year round. Mm. And I think it's a kind of a programming. And um, he did that in Palm Beach at um, Brazilian Court, the hotel there, which is where his restaurant is located. And uh, it was like a seven course meal oh my featuring truffle and... Why wasn't I there? I know, I think you were very busy that <laughs> Maybe day. I was busy. <laughs> yes, yes, you were. <laughs> and then there's uh, Balud Sud Miami? Yes, there is. And that's probably kind of his uh, flagship in Miami. That's yes. where people really get to know his cuisine, his phenomenally famous burger and all of those wonderful sort of uh, menu items. But he's just such a refined, such an incredible, genuine person. I'm very happy always to see what he's doing. Well, I love what we talked about. I love this stunning picture. Promise me if you ever go back to Reset, you'll invite me because uh, after it's been a tough couple years yes. and I think everybody could use that yes. little time. You can Reset too. Uh, <laughs> I probably would be a little bit nervous in that helicopter as well, but if you get in, I'll get in. I am with you. I'm coming back. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for coming. So stunning as always. Uh, okay. Coming up, the premier polo player who's the face of Ralph Lauren. And he is drop dead gorgeous. Stay with us. is known around the world as a premier polo player, the face of Ralph Lauren Black Label and the world of polo fragrances. Now, if that's not enough, he also has his own collection of fragrances. Welcome, Ignacio Figueras. So nice to have you. Nice to be here. Oh, How are you? I'm doing great. I heard you go by the name Nacho? That's right. Nacho, it's a usual nickname for Ignacio. So I've always been called Nacho. My third grade teacher is the only person ever to call me Ignacio. <laughs> so, may I call you Nacho? Yeah, if you, don't call, if you say Ignacio, I don't turn you're around. You're not going to turn yeah, around, okay, exactly. and I want your conversation <laughs> with me. Um, I know you're from Argentina. De que parte? What part? I was born in, uh, outside of Buenos Aires in a town called 25 de Mayo, where the, my farm is and my breeding operation of horses is. So, 
beautiful town. And I know your passion for horses has been with you since you were like a little, little boy. Tell me how it, how it started and why you love them so much. I find them to be the most amazing animal on this planet. The outside of a horse is good for the inside of a man, said Winston Churchill. And I think that synthesizes the relationship that at least I have with horses. I started playing polo when I was nine years old in Argentina. My father transmitted uh, me his passion for polo and for horses and it's been an incredible um, way to grow up. I love polo, I love the sport, I love the teamwork, I love the horses. You, then you start breeding and you get to play polo on horses that you bred yourself so it makes it even better. And then when you think that you cannot love polo anymore, you, you get love it. <laughs> you no, you get to play with your children Aww. and then that's kind of like the best thing that can ever happen to you. We were talking before we started, you have four beautiful children. They have grown up with this love as well. They actually travel with you. You told me you've been to Australia with them, Rome, and two or three of them are now actually playing the same sport as you. So I have four children, a 22 year old boy who is now a professional polo player, Aww. who's been traveling with me and my wife and I for you know 20 something years. How that's, great. That's his life. We go around the world playing polo and he's been, they always been around with us. We travel with a tutor. They go to school when we are in Argentina for a few months a year. So that's, that's they don't know any better than that. That's her life traveling around the world following her, their father play polo. It must be so great to see your son play. It's incredible, you know, it's, it's incredible to see him grown up, grow up and mature and, and love the sport that I love as much as I do. Wow. And, um, you know, it's a blessing that we all kind of like get to um, share this incredible life that we have. Where it's, I feel very blessed. Uh, that we can be outside with horses doing what we love. It's, it's really a blessing. And speaking of blessings, I was reading here, Nacho, and this is amazing. You met American fashion photographer Bruce Weber. How amazing was that? And it ended up turning into a 20 year career as the face of polo. This is just, tell me about that, that's amazing. 1999, I was playing polo in the Hamptons. I go to dinner to someone's house. I met Bruce and Bruce says, oh, we're shooting Penelope Cruz for the um, Ralph Lauren ads. I think it would be cool to have a polo player. Would you be up for it? And I said, of course. So I go to the office, I meet Ralph and Ralph thinks, okay, great, this will be great. A couple of months later, I'm uh, in Miami shooting with Penelope. Uh, and then, you know, it was a 20 year um, relationship. Ralph has been like a you know, mentor to me. Yeah. He's an incredible man. I always say that I didn't work for a, a brand. I worked for a guy that I loved and respect very much. So I learned a lot from him. Uh, and yes, it was an incredible, an incredible journey. That's fantastic. And now you have your own brand. Yes. I love the package. It's just amazing. You. you have the horseshoe. This is green. I believe we talked, this was Palm Beach. Yeah, that's Palm Beach. You can see them in the bag. I have six of them. I, a few years ago, I asked Ralph, you know, if he would be okay with me telling my own story and, oh. and doing my own thing. And he was like, yes. He was absolutely, he's, that's the kind of mind that he is. And so my wife and I, and even my children, we all sat down and said, what do we want to do? And the fragrances are named, they're called Ignacio Figueras Collection, and they're named after the places where I play polo and where, where we have created memories as a family. I'm gonna spray and just kind of Do that, see. huh? What do you think? Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. It's good, right? They're universal, not men, no women, they're for anybody. It doesn't even stop there. Again, you continue these amazing goals. You support a charity, I read here, founded by Prince Harry. Hmm. Tell me how that came to be, and I just, I love that philanthropy side of you as well. I uh, met Harry in 2007, playing at a charity polo match in England to raise funds for Centivali, and since then, I felt, um, very um, um, con connected and passionate about his passion towards charity and how much he cared about making the world a better place. And we've been great friends since then. And uh, it's an honor for me to be an ambassador of, of such a great charity. And Princess Diana did so much good. We miss her so mm. much. Um, lastly, I want to talk about these stables that you've built in Argentina. Again, your passion for horses, which I think is also kind of migrating to other places as well, correct? We breed horses and I believe like, you know, that I have a collection of them. I love them and I said I want to make a stable that kind of like looks like a museum where I can showcase my, my, my horses. So we created a company called FDG, which is Figueras Design Group. And we kind of like the way Niklaus does it for, um, for golf courses, we do it with equestrian projects. And we started getting a lot of people from around the world asking us to help them 
build their dream stables and equestrian projects. So it's also fun because I, I'm, I'm a frustrated architect. <laughs> and, uh, You've done quite well. And, and, Don't worry. <laughs> and, and working with with the other nachos has been an incredible journey. They're super talented, and we love uh, working together and creating oh. these special places. Nacho, thank you so much. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Coming up, a band that's bringing a new sound to the music industry. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. rock or pop probably come to mind. My next guests have created a new sound by mixing rock, pop, and dance music to create the desert rock sounds of Mojave Gray. Welcome Xander Black, Lewis Middleton, and Michael Posey. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so for being thanks, here. Thanks for having us. All right, be here. Xander, let me start with you. Uh, where did you get this idea of creating the combination of music that you call desert rock, and which, by the way, love the display? Yeah, I feel I mean, right It's taking me right there. <laughs> Um, I think, you know, uh, the pandemic definitely caused a lot of artists like ourselves to reevaluate and reimagine everything. And I had actually moved to the desert, and it was a perfect template to recreate what we were doing. And uh, we wanted to blend a different, few different genres and came, came up with this sound. And I've seen some of the videos on YouTube and yeah. I love how you really bring the desert to us and you combine that nature. Why was it important for you? Well, it's such an inspiring place. You know, it's hard not to, uh, it's hard not to, you know, be creative it's and, beautiful. and take in all the scenery when you're, when you're there. And uh, it's also quiet. So, you, you know, we, we were able to really concentrate and get a lot of work done when we're out there. And when I, a lot of people were stuck at home, I wanted to really show, you know, just this beautiful natural landscape. So, and it served itself well with kind of the style. It was a good backdrop, if yeah. you will. Oh, yeah. Very inspiring. And I lived in Arizona a few years, and I actually oh, so, loved it. So you know all so about I that. do love the desert. Uh, I, 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 I would probably live there again if I could. It's very inspiring, isn't it? It is. I mean, it's very peaceful. I mean, we're so lucky to be able to work together the way that we do. Uh, but to have that backdrop, that landscape, uh, to come together in that sort of environment, it really lends itself to being an artist, I think. I, I believe that, you know, you really have time to like center yourself, think, and just, it's very like therapeutic. And create actually. great music yeah. Yeah. at the same time for us to hear. Now, Mojave Gray formed in 2021. So what type of music were you performing, let's say before, and then how do you feel that change of music has inspired you to do something more? Yeah, uh, so we had all played before um, in various rock bands, and that was kind of our foundation, I would say. But we've all always loved dance music and electronic music. I do too. Everybody does. <laughs> I do too. I mean, I think now more than ever, people want to dance and they want to have fun. So I think just blending those two worlds was something we were all really interested in. And uh, yeah, it feels good. Now, I know the album is called Monument. Let's talk about the songs. Let me start with you. What's your favorite one? I mean, don't tell me all of them. I get it. But there's always <laughs> that one, right, that everybody loves. Sure. Uh, I'll say this. Um, because we've worked together so long in different capacities as musicians, and we really rely on our live act, uh, Afterglow, it's a song we've been using as an opener for a oh. lot of our shows. And there's something about that, that human connection and that... Um, I don't know, it's just, there's this energy that comes from that song, the way it builds, the message that comes across, it immediately brings us together as a band, but also you can feel that with the audience. And you? Well, they're all great. I knew it, there it was. <laughs> but if I had to pick one. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, a song called uh, Wonder Valley. Wonder Valley. Which uh, I love because it was sort of the turning point in our creative direction. Yeah. And um, sort of like, it's also uh, in a real location in the yeah. desert, which yeah. is called Wonder Valley, which is where we shot one of our first videos. Nice. Yeah. It's this really wondrous place. A heart can break in a mall. So pick the pieces off the floor. Life won't be what it was before. But I promise you that. Your favorite? 
Um, I I mean... You gotta be partial to one. Come on, don't be like the whole thing. Right. Uh, Thunderbird. Thunderbird. Right. Ooh, I like yeah. that name. What is that about? Yeah, it's it's about um, chasing inspiration or the, the muse of, of life. <laughs> So is it easy to create music when I think two of you live near each other and the other one is far away? How do you do it? Uh, we've been utilizing a lot of technology, Zoom, uh, FaceTime, and we've done rehearsals over Zoom. We've done lots of writing sessions. It's been uh, interesting but really efficient. So who does what in the band? Uh, I'm the keyboardist and okay. I also do mixing as well. Guitars. Guitars. Yeah. And I'm the singer. I was going <laughs> to it's the hat. And I'm the singer. It's <laughs> yeah. the hat. I was going to say, it's the hat. Uh, so what's next for you guys? What's on the horizon? Are we touring? Yeah, we, uh, we definitely will be touring. We're actually going to be in the studio um, coming up for the next four weeks. So nice. we're very, very excited because we've done all of this development, all of this prep, and now we're finally really laying down the real thing. So can't wait for that. Well, definitely invite me to come to one, please, oh, especially you if you're in South Florida. 100%. And I get to go behind the scenes, right? You get full <laughs> VIP. And we love South Florida. So. Yeah. There you go. And yeah. can I get a, a hat for the Cuban cowgirl yeah. here? Right. There you go. <laughs> My lady. Thank you so yeah, much. Good luck to you. Really nice thank to you. you. Yeah, thanks for having Thank me. you so Real much pleasure. for your time. Yeah, thank you. I hope to hear a lot of you on the radio and all over. We, you will. Thank you, especially Thunderbird. Yes, Thunderbird. I like that one. And still to come, an amazing estate that is for sale for $150 million. Grab your checkbook. It's gorgeous. We'll be right back. the South Florida luxury development market is on fire. And the demand for prime residences and condominiums is at an all-time high. Joining me to talk about what's in the pipeline is Patrick O'Connell. He is Senior Vice President of Business Development for Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, EWM Realty. Welcome. Thank you, Olga. It's great to be here. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Let me tell you, born and raised in Miami, mm -hmm. and I, I, I don't even, I can't even express the awe I feel when I see my city. Caliente, caliente, caliente. Mm -hmm. I mean, things are hot. <laughs> so give me a bird's eye view of, of the market. What's the latest and greatest? So in our world, uh -huh. um, at Berkshire EWM, I think the most exciting thing right now is a new development in the village of Pinecrest called Pine Park Villas. Gorgeous area. It's beautiful, and this is just 18, 18 townhomes in a gated community, nice. three stories, fully finished, beautiful Italian kitchens, high-end appliances, two-car garage, elevator, ready to go, and these are breaking ground in about a week. Oh, I love it. And the location is fantastic, close to so many great things. Absolutely, absolutely. Pinecrest has the best schools, the best parks. It is just an ideal location for folks wanting that South Florida lifestyle, but maybe wanting something a little bit easier than a single family home. All right, so let's go to other developments in South Florida. Tell me about your largest and latest as well. Let's move maybe a little bit more north. Okay, yes, actually, so behind us right now, or behind me, uh, Merrick Manor. Oh, look at this. Beautiful, beautiful development um, in a perfect location in the city of Coral Gables, 227 units, fully finished, these are moving ready right now. Oh my so gosh. we have only about 25% of the building left. We have a great selection of units though, and uh, wonderful walkability to the shops of Merrick Park, to schools. Um, it is just one of those, those perfectly located projects and uh, 
folks need to hurry because we have very few left. It reminds me of like a, a, well, like a little mini New York where you could get to anything. You can get to the market. You can get to the best shops. You can get to the best areas. You don't need a car. It's beautiful. It's clean. It's peaceful. It's just mesmerizing. This is gorgeous. A beautiful project. Now, I was reading here, your company has always been luxury focused, right? Yes. Tell me about the most luxurious projects you're working on right now. So, also in Coral Gables, oh boy. but a little Another bit. Another great location. It, a great location, <laughs> walkable to downtown, which I'll tell you, the walkability part is key it's today, huge. right? It, it, it's having that leave your car at home and just go out and have dinner and shop and right. so forth. So, Biltmore Row, this is 10 townhomes, another townhome development, but only 10 of them together. And uh, it's part of a, a larger development called Biltmore Square that comprises four luxury developments. This is the last phase that we're, we're working with right now. We have just a few of these left as well. They are three-story townhomes again, four car garages, elevator, fully finished, ready to go. And this developer, MG developer, is really breaking records in terms of the, the price in the city of Coral Gables. It's very exciting, and like I said, we have just a few of these left to sell. And I, I tell you, it's quaint. It's not too large. It's almost perfect. It's elegant, mesmerizing. I tell you, I'm going to be an empty nester soon, so this is where I want to be, okay? We are going to do our best to save one for you, Olga. <laughs> I have one more year. Okay. Thank you so much, Patrick. My pleasure. Great stuff. Beautiful location. Always check it out. That is South Florida for you, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. So in February of this year, the Financial Times published a feature titled, How Miami Became the Most Important City in America. The key takeaway, the world has South Florida squarely in its sights and real estate, it's in high demand. Here to talk about the market and what's on the horizon is Ron Sheffield, president and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, EWM Realty. Welcome. Hey, and welcome thank back, you. Of thank you, Olga. thank all you, All right, so let's talk about this. I mean, it is the 305. Yes. Born and raised there. Yep. I'm amazed at what I've seen, the growth. Uh, tell me about real estate, what you're seeing right now. What's like the, the big story? Well, the big story for this first quarter of 2022 has been the fact that million dollar plus condos have actually exceeded the number of million dollar plus sales of single family homes. My goodness. That doesn't mean that single family homes are worth any less and quite the contrary, they're more like collector's items now. <laughs> uh, but we have a few more condos than we do single family for sale, but both of them are selling extremely well. And in the over million dollar market though, 55% of our total sales were, were in, during the first quarter, 55% uh -huh. of our sales were, were condos versus 45% single family. So, Why do you think that is, Ron? Well, I think it's all about community. You know, we talk in the condo business about selling the two C's of community and convenience. Okay. And I think that uh, after COVID, people realize that, hey, you know, the lifestyle is very important to me. Especially in Florida? In Florida, where the weather is great and it's easy to get to, and we have so many assets here now. Look at this. But uh, isn't that a beautiful picture? I tell you, you could look at that all after. Afternoon. I was looking here, Ron, and this article, which is very similar to the one that I was talking about, the city is now considered to be a paradise of freedom. It's attracted millions of people, but not just people, money. Lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of money. Well, you know, I think the fact that uh, Florida is one of eight states with no state income tax been a big draw for a long time now. But uh, with COVID, so many people staying at home, you know, people started searching for just different ways of living. Uh, home offices, you know, and having the amenity packages in these condo buildings. Mm -hmm. You know, these condo buildings are all like mini country clubs today. So many things to do uh, with not only your family, but with uh, friends and guests who come to visit your building. So I think uh, also people feel like that they've been freed up from some of the maintenance of a home. Uh, not that, again, that homes are not still selling very, very briskly as well, but uh, you're no longer cutting or having, you know, to take Mow care the of lawn. Getting, getting, you know, the pools and all the different things. Absolutely. So. I've, I've said it many times, my kids are going to college soon and I've eventually wanted to, you know, graduate yep. to that kind of living. A lot of people are thinking just like you're thinking. And it's a lot of from the West Coast, it's New York, even South America. I mean, we've got, we are the gateway, if you will, and they're just coming in 
huge numbers. Well, and it's continuing to build on that. And of course, you know, the big uh, story even for the last five or six years has been the return of the domestic buyer, the growth of the domestic buyer. We still have a lot of international buyers, but now the domestic buyers from outside our community are equally as strong. Let's talk about trends for the rest of the year. What should we be looking out for? What do you predict? Because everything that you predict always happens. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but uh, you know, what we watch all the time more than anything is the supply and demand of our marketplace. And so, so, you know, in any business, you know, if the supply is, is, is low like it is today and the demand continues to be strong, prices are going to go up. Uh, so consequently, we have seen some significant increases in values, both for rental values as well as home sale values, condo sale values. But I think that watching the supply and demand is what we're going to be watching a lot this, this next, you know, even few months, you know, with uh, inflation being on everyone's mind today, mm -hmm. with an uptick in interest rates today. You know, these are the things that affect our business. Uh, but uh, demand is the strongest uh, factor we have going for us because there is, seems to be no let up. No one is predicting a let up. You know, more and more people are coming here. And again, from outside the country as well as with, with inside the U.S. And I think that we'll continue to see that. And nobody could have predicted, like you said, COVID. Everybody who was just locked up, they really wanted to get out. They came to Florida and they basically said, <laughs> I'm not leaving. I'm staying here. <laughs> well, and you, and you know that is uh, something that we've, we've had many second homeowners here for a long time and many of these people now have converted to full-time living. There you go. Truly a world-class destination. Thanks again. Thank you. And you're coming back to talk about much more. Absolutely. I'll be back. I can't wait. Okay, we'll be right back with much more Lifestyles Plus. Stick around. Lifestyles Plus. Our next guests certainly know about real estate. Ron Shuffield is president and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services EWM Realty with offices in Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County. Also with us, Ashley Cusack. She is senior vice president of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services EWM Realty. Today we're talking about the ultra luxurious Arched Estate in Coconut Grove. Welcome to both of you. Thank you, Olga. Thank you. I can't wait to talk about this home, but before we do so, Ron, let me start with you. I mean, this home is stunning. We know that. Yes. But tell me about the rise of all these luxury homes in uh, South Florida. You know, Florida's growing as a state now at the rate of, oh, of about 600 new residents every day. So by the time the sun sets tonight, we'll have 600 more residents imagine? here. And many of these people are wealthy people. And of course, uh, in our market in Miami, uh, where we already had some very nice properties, now we've seen those prices increase substantially. And I think that's going to continue to happen because the people are going to continue to come. Our business is a supply and demand business. We're down to the lows uh, of inventory that we've never seen before. Yeah. Uh, just to kind of look at one particular segment of the market in the over $10 million market for single family homes in Miami, two years ago, we were selling about two homes a month. This is the whole industry selling about two homes a month valued over $10 million. Today, we're selling a dozen homes a month over $10 million. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's talk about this price tag, yes. which is a lot more than $10 million. Ashley, the Arched Estate is for sale for <clears throat> $150 million. You're yes. the realtor for this yes. magnificent home. Uh, tell me about the amazing features. I know we have pictures and, oh, take me there. Well. First, you have to start with the property itself. I mean, it sits on over four acres on Biscayne Bay. So the direct view is only inhibited by Key Biscayne, which is miles away. So it's really spectacular. But the house is, there's two houses, and they're both special. She built one, Adrian Arsh is the owner, and she built one. Beautiful details, 20-foot ceilings. It just, both were, were built for entertaining and they are spectacular and just the details are amazing so and the other one uh was was built in 1913 and restored so i'm looking at these pictures i've been looking at them since you both arrived and they are stunning something that caught my eye oh my goodness i mean i know you guys are looking at the pictures but i can't help but just <gasps> hold my breath and wish i had a check for 150. uh waterfront Yes, so it's Biscayne Bay, so it's 405 feet on the water. Oh my goodness. Which is just, and it's, and it's just open, it's gorgeous. How did she come to buy it? 
Well, she bought her property first where okay. she built a home in, in 1999 and then she bought the property next, next door, door in 2007. And did it cost a lot to restore that then? What yes, did she, she, do put, to do she that? put millions of dollars in to restore it. She wanted to keep it, bring it back to its original grandeur. Um, it used to belong to William Jennings Bryan, who is the original, that's who built it in 1913. And so it's just, it's magnificent. It has beautiful, original, um, hand-painted Cuban tile throughout. It's just, but How she did it. It's three bedrooms in the main house and a two bedroom guest house. Gosh, I just think it's such an exquisite location, so peaceful. When you take people there to see it, obviously they have to make an appointment. Yes. Because not everybody yes. can afford this. Yes. Do they just sit there and wonder, wow. It really, it really has moved everybody that's seen it. We have not had anybody there that hasn't just had their breath taken away. Are there other estates of this magnitude? There are, but they've never been sold because the people who built most of those are still living in them. And I think that um, South Florida will be surprised over the next 50 years to see how many fine estates we have. And of course, when you look at an estate like this, they only change hands about every 30 to 40 years. So when you have an opportunity, it may be a 30 to 40 year one time opportunity to do this. Also that I find to be more spectacular is the fact that this amazing woman is taking the proceeds or the sale, all the money, $150 million. And what is she doing with it, Ron? Giving it to charity. And of course, she's known for that. Uh, Miami has been very fortunate to be uh, the, the beneficiary of so much uh, she's done for our community. You know, our Performing Arts Center has her name on the building because she was so generous with a major gift to that uh, several years ago. And uh, of course, she's, she'll still have a stake in Miami, but uh, she, uh, she, has, uh, she just doesn't need a property this large uh, for the future. And she's looking for someone else to be the caretaker of this property as she has been the caretaker of this property. Thank you so much. Good luck with the sale. Thank you for coming in again. Thank you, Olga. Appreciate it. And thank you for all you do. Okay. Still to come, a foundation that is having an impact all over South Florida. Stay with us. back to Lifestyles Plus, the magazine of BHHS EWM Realty. The Baptist Health Foundation is a nonprofit support organization for Baptist Health, whose mission is to inspire philanthropy and build donor relationships to support community wellness, innovation, and leadership in healthcare. So joining me today is Vice President of Development and Development Support for Baptist Health Foundation, Barbara James. Welcome. Thank you so much for having oh, me. Oh no, thanks for being here. So important to talk about this. Um, tell me a little bit about the Baptist Health Foundation. Well, as you said, we um, exist to support all of the health care um, at Baptist Health, and it is um, exceptional because we are able to bring preeminent and innovation and research and, and really serve this community that we all love so much. That's right, and we need to help the community. How does donations, how does all that help in terms of the mission that y'all are trying to do? Well, as you can imagine, I mean, you know, we we fill the gaps, we elevate the care, we are able um, with the community's investment to be able to to bring things to the community that we don't have currently, and 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 really elevate and be preeminent in, in caring for our community. And there's so many programs that are so worthwhile talking about. We could be here for hours, Barbara. Uh, clinical trials are also so important and they're all funded by the generosity of, you know, donations and they're I mean, they're, they're what we need to find cures in the future, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, research and innovation is a key focus area um, that the foundation is really, um, you know, putting us on the map for. And so it's it's something that I think that in the years to come, it's it's going to be an investment that the community has made that will change the trajectory of the of the um, care that we are given. Speaking of map, what area does Baptist serve? I mean, it, it, it's growing by leaps, leaps and, bounds. and bounds. Every time I look, it's pineapple here, pineapple there, pineapple, pineapple, pineapple. Yes, we are pineapple <laughs> proud, without a doubt. We span a four county area. We have hospitals, urgent cares, um, primary offices uh, throughout a four county area. We are as south as the Keys and as north as Palm Beach. 
So, um, you know, we are here to serve the South Florida um, community. What are the giving opportunities you'd like to share with the community in terms of how they can get involved, how they can help? I mean, every little bit counts. Absolutely. Well, we just had the wonderful honor of celebrating our doctors during a Doctor's Day. And so the community really um, rises to the occasion. They write wonderful thank you notes to their care, to their care providers um, out of gratitude. We are upcoming into our hospital week with our nurses week and, and um, you know, I, we suspect no less than those frontline workers getting all of the um, accolades that they so, you know, are deserved of. Additionally, we have wonderful annual program with our employee giving. We believe that, you know, um, the giving starts at home and yes. we um, as uh, employees of Baptist Health South Florida are so generous of not only our time and talent, but of our treasure. So I, you know, I always applaud all our colleagues for, for giving um, and supporting the hospital as well. Lots and lots of opportunity to support research, innovation, technology, um, really any anything that you want, you know, we offer at the foundation the opportunity to fund. You mentioned a lot of areas where we see Baptist. I know Palm Beach, I think, is the newest. It Talk is. Talk to me about that. That's great. I mean, I know you just had a big kadoo, big party. Yes, yeah. So we um, entered the Palm Beach market a couple of years ago. We have three campuses, um, and we have a two that are really um, dear and near to my heart, Bethesda East, Bethesda West. Uh, at Bethesda East, we have a lot of capital um, projects going on, a, an um, uh, emergency room uh, renovation, which has um, been our, our front door during these last couple of years and has been hit very, very hard. So we are going to bring the newest technology and, and make what is really a superstar team, give them the, 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 you know, the means to be able to deliver that care in even a more efficient um, way. Out west, we the population, we have had a lot of people move to Palm Beach County, as you know, in the last year, and we are going to do a, a uh, extensive of expansion, bringing more rooms and, and you know, being able to, again, meet the community need for health care um, locally. Of course, um, it's, it's great, you know, as we expand into all of these areas, it's important to let the community know that the money raised local stays local. Yes. And so, you know, in your own hometown, you don't have to leave um, to, to get your health care. You can have the health care close to home that is, you know, that you're used to. And I want to head a little south now towards yes. Miami and uh, Baptist Hospital, Maine, which is that one right there. Isn't I'm, that I'm gorgeous? Just, it's absolutely amazing. It's, I'm only a couple blocks away from this one. And it, it's always important, I think, to talk about a Miami Cancer Institute. Mm. It opened five years ago. I know you guys just celebrated five years. We did. And it's been just such an amazing journey to see, I mean, 1,200 patients go through Miami Cancer Institute, which is obviously, you know, uh, Baptist health. Yes. Um, I always just want to talk about it because I have two loved, loved ones um, getting treatment there now mm. and I just find it to be a very unique place uh, that multidisciplinary approach it's not just doctors and nurses who are there to help you uh, find a, a cure or support the person who is obviously fighting cancer, but it's just amazing how they just take in the whole family and they say, do. we got gotcha, you and we're gonna help you through this journey. Mm -hmm. And I always like to personalize it because I just think Miami Cancer Institute is, uh, is just, if you ever have to go, and unfortunately we had to go, mm -hmm. it is the place to be in to get that best treatment, best doctors, and best approach. Without a doubt, yes. It is the very best, and um, we have um, the the best doctors. It is where you do take your family and loved ones, and, and I think that anyone who walks on that campus um, understands that um, once you walk through those doors, you are part of the Baptist family forever, and we will, we will, you know, take you through this journey. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, you know, I wish your your family Thank the very you. best. I remember while they were building it, I was saying to myself, "Gorgeous! I hope I never have to walk in there." Yes. Unfortunately, we had to walk through there, but it was the best place to be, and it's uh, it's been an amazing journey for us. We feel very blessed to be a part of the Miami Cancer Institute family. That's amazing. Thank you so much for our viewers. To wrap it up, Barbara. Uh, Again, the philanthropy is so important, so important for the community. Final thoughts? Just certainly want to thank the community for continuing to join us in this journey. Um, we are about ready on the cusp of um, some amazing uh, growth uh, in the, you know, the next decade. And 
we, you know, we want to acknowledge that we could not do it without the community support. And so we are most grateful. And um, I think that you will see pineapple proud <laughs> people everywhere, all, you know, and beyond. It is, um, we, we love serving the Southern, um, you know, the South Florida community. As I drive north, I'm sure I'm gonna start seeing yes. more pineapples in the future. Yes. Thank you so much for your time. Thank and thank you. you for what you do for our community. Thank you. Saving patients' lives. Appreciate it. Up next, icons in the fashion world right here on Lifestyles Plus. Don't go away. designing elegant 1940s Hollywood glamour evening wear for women since 1988. While planning a move to Palm Beach, COVID hit, which expedited their departure from New York. Since moving, they have opened a boutique on Worth Avenue, created a collection of separates, and launched their post-pandemic collection of evening wear. I'm so thrilled to welcome Mark Badgley and James Mishka. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks so for much. being here. I'm so excited it's you guys are here. here. I love the spread behind us. It's beautiful. No, no, no. It's like I, I, I just want you to know that I love the blue. Hint, hint. Your perfect position for Size that, right? Seven and a half, please. Okay, gotcha. Got it. <laughs> I was reading here, gentlemen, you've been coming to Palm Beach to show your collection since the early 90s. You had a boutique in the early 2000s. So what made you decide to reopen now? You know what? The Palm Beach woman, the Southern Florida woman, loves to indulge. She never yeah. really quite stopping, quite stop, excuse me, going out, uh, looking beautiful. She entertains at home lavishly. She, she likes to look beautiful, you know, in every circumstance of her life. And it's just an amazing showcase and appreciation for what we do. And we just love being here. Ah, uh, and you, sir? It's fantastic. I mean, the Palm Beach woman who shops at our store is, like Mark said, she indulges herself. Um, she has never stopped doing that, which is... And she's Miami, she's yeah. Jupiter, she's, you know, she's everywhere. Um, in the, the Southern Florida community, they all zip around and... And she likes color and she likes flair. She, she yeah. does. Right? She's not a wallflower. She's, she doesn't dress, you know, so many women are so practical by nature these days, which I understand um, across the country. Uh, they almost dress in sort of an industrial way. But here, they, they love fashion. You have to get dressed every morning anyway, right? So why not put on something that's that's beautiful? And she understands that. So it's fun. Tienes que ponerte colores. I always say you have to wear colors. Lots and lots of colors. Yeah, color. All right. So uh, rumor has it you two are gypsies in the sense that we have moved 29 times. We have. Uh, excuse me. Oh, what's wrong? We're Something's, hopeless. Something is wrong with I us. Know, um, we're hopeless. When we tell our parents that we're moving again, they're like, okay, get the straight jacket out. That's why we like fashion. It's constantly changing. We embrace change. You have to in this industry. I mean, we, you know, we, well, we had 200 openings last year wow. yeah, between our various collections. Uh, and we love creating a new home, a new atmosphere. We buy these old homes and we redecorate them and then we're on to the next. Yeah, we're never gonna move, but then we, yeah, yeah, we do. We say, oh, so, this is the last time. And this is it. Yes. And, and, are we stable now or are we? We're, I think we're stable we're, for a little bit. We're stable for, for the moment. We just sold our house on Flagler. We just moved into a new place on the ocean. And, I, and James and I said, we're done. But our friends don't believe before, us. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, during COVID, the creativity continued. I believe you started the passion, which was, and I read it here, cooking, which I love to That's cook. Me, That's actually. you. Yeah, I'm, the, okay. I'm the cook. He's amazing. I love to cook as well. And you started sketching. So tell me about the passion for cooking first. I mean, it's always been something that I've done to relax. Um, it's kind of like fashion. It's creating something new every day. It's like it's a brand new thing. You're only as good as your last meal or your last collection. So <laughs> it's very similar in a lot of ways. Yeah, and I benefit from it. Um, he's an amazing, amazing chef. <laughs> What's his chef. best? You know what? He's so versatile. He doesn't have a best. He's not a baker, 
but <laughs> everything else he does I had a is... a couple sourdough disasters during COVID, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but our friends line up for his beautiful dinner parties. They're exquisite. <gasps> love it. Tell me about the sketching. I, I love to sketch. I find it very therapeutic. James and I published a few books last year during COVID. Right, our... during, when COVID locked us down, Mark started like sketching just to get all the emotions out. So, you know, it was such a myriad of emotions from anger to happiness at times. Disappointment. Um, disappointment, yeah. all kinds of things. So those came out in his sketches. It was and a great we... outlet. And we published a book about uh, a fashion, a sketch book, a uh, coffee table book about Corona. Uh, that was super successful and really fun. And we did a, a few others, and it was a great outlet. And I'm glad you actually found that outlet because a lot of people, unfortunately, were just depressed yeah. doing nothing, but you were able to make something of it yeah. and give something to us as well to enjoy. Yeah, it was wonderful. I hope so. And then we also auctioned the sketches off on eBay, and um, we donated to Feeding America. We fed 200,000 meals out of the sketches. Wow. So that was yeah, pretty was fun wonderful. to do, That's pretty rewarding. Fantastic. You also designed uh, evening wear uh, post-pandemic. So tell me what came to mind and... Uh... You know, we did this beautiful collection of, we called it Lux Lounge. Lux Lounge. Yeah. And because a woman wasn't necessarily going to a big black tie charity event, because none of that was happening, but she was entertaining at home. A lot. A lot. Right? And she wanted to look special and beautiful, but in a more relaxed way. So we did these beautiful collections of at-home, glamorous mm. evening separates. Was that your spring line? Yes. OK. And um, it was super well received. And we still managed to uh, you know, appeal to our customer, even though she wasn't going out on the town that night. That's important. Also read here, I mean, you guys don't stop. You really don't. Well, you've moved 29 times. <laughs> Obviously, you don't stop. You're adding a new element to uh, Badgley Mishka. You're creating a residential project in South Florida. How did that come we about? Are, um, you know, we started talking with some developers, and they said that thought that was a great idea for Badgley Mishka to do a branded residential development. So we're, and we've, we loved creating houses. We love creating houses. Um, we have a furniture collection, we have a home collection, and it's just something we love to do. So we're going to give that sort of glamorous feeling to this residential development. Home and fashion, it all blurs. It all comes blurs. together, it really absolutely. Does. We had a unique opportunity uh, a while back where we um, decorated the presidential suites at the Breakers. Oh, very within, nice. Within that was fun with their budget. Opening yeah. endless budget, and it was so fun. Especially when it's someone else's money. I know. <laughs> That's fun. And um, we really love, you know, because home is fashion. It you know is. what I mean? It's like our customers, they look like their living rooms, you know, right. these women. And how it, you know, just pours into all of that. So we really enjoy that aspect of our business as well. There's a difference between a house and a home. 30 years of fashion, right? Mm -hmm. Real quick, two sound bites from both of you. How has it felt to just make women feel so good? Gorgeous. Endlessly gratifying. Oh. Yeah. It really is. It really just makes us feel good when you see somebody out on the streets or at a party wearing one of our dresses or our suits. And it can be from the current season, it can be from 25 years ago, and it just makes us feel great. And we remember every single piece. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, remember, seven and a half, right? Got Size it. four <laughs> petite. Perfect. I think you're a two. <laughs> well, that's because I'm holding it in as we're speaking. <laughs> but when you really see the reality, it's a four P. <laughs> thank you, gentlemen. Good luck to you. Thank, thank you. And thank you for joining us at Lifestyles Plus. We'll see you soon. Take care.